Let's see, I think, um, I think what I was going to do. Was. Put some stuff into a private locker. This is already in my private locker. No, no, no. Oh, cool. I have a utility pouch. Alright, so I'm gonna travel light. So I can do this quest. I wanted I needed to get some some documents, some some important documents. But first I wanted to read. Well, first I got some mail. Ugh. We saw a trailer for a game called Kitten, where you literally pick up cat shit and throw it away. Gross. Gross. I know there's a, there's a game where you play as a cat and you knock shit down, and I really want to play it, actually. I, I think I think I might have it, have it installed and create a list of games that I can just kind of throw up for funsies for a little bit. Sammy got it for me. I'm really collateral damage. Yeah, that's the one. Cat lateral damage. <clears throat> Let me create a list. I want to create a list of games I could potentially play randomly. Uh, so you're going to get a little bit of, if you weren't here yesterday, you're going to get a little bit of lore and story as I read through some of these documents to catch up on a lot of the story I ignored yesterday since I was really tired. So hard work is paying off. Dear Sam, I wonder where you are right now. If it's somewhere powered by the, our wind farm, if anyone should be benefiting from our work, it's you until you brought us into the network. We could only provide power to a small region. Now we can send all the way to big cities and beyond smiley face. I'm still not 100% on the details, but basically transmitting it via the beach means we don't suffer any additional loss due to increased distances. So it can go as far as we need it to. Good thing we kept the faith in the second expedition and kept this place properly maintained. You made our efforts worthwhile. We can't thank you enough. So I'm supposed to be the second expedition? What? Oh, okay. It's just weird because like I was supposed to, like I had this, I never had a team, but everybody keeps talking about my team that I never had. The game is fun on VR. Bridge Links makes the world a better place. Hey, Sam. Sounds like you're still showing us how it's all done. It's been making more and more deliver. I've been making more and more deliveries myself, though. I'll have you know, the Oxy really helps me with to cope with my fears, so thanks for that. But don't go thinking I've got ice in my veins or anything. I still panic easy, and I still drop plenty of cargo when I do. Sweat face. <laughs> Sweat drop. Uh, doubt I'm the only one though. I found plenty of stuff. The other from the that the some of the other porters must have lost on a run. I try to do the right thing, take what dropped cargo I can to the nearest post box and leave weapons and gear in the share locker. Won't lie, sometimes I feel like saying fuck it and letting it lie. But what goes around comes around, right? I need I help recover some lost cargo. Someone will do the same for me. That's how bridge links are formed after all. No, they weren't my team. They were just like he we, he it, they introduced themselves to me. Or the one guy did. He's like, hey, I'm blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're this guy. Okay. He had to introduce so. Or he had to introduce himself to me. He wasn't my team. He was just another guy. Uh, Most of us will never be legends like you. No shame in that. But if we work together and make connections, well, we can at least make the world a better place. And that's where bridge links come in. Together we can accomplish so much more than we could ever could. That's what, that's what, the, that's what the game is referring to as my team. But basically he said... Oh, you're, you're somebody with dooms. You need to help us take care of this corpse. And it's like, okay, sure, let's go. 
and then you know we get attacked and they die and then suddenly my team died and it's like but they weren't my team they were just a couple people <clears throat> uh nick easton cargo quantity and your porter grade how are your porter grades these days sam i'm not sure you're aware that trying to account for all five factors is the b basic premise but if you're anything like me you just want to deliver as much stuff as you can am i right if so, you could always just load yourself up with a massive haul and aim for a bridge's bonus for total cargo weight. Oh. Hmm. Norman Reedus and the fetus. The, it, it's, it, it's different. But it, I wouldn't say it's bad just yet. I know a lot of people are probably going to uh, judge this game very harshly right now because it's like, uh, it's not super action game you know i don't know like this is the first day I, I can't really say too much on it until we get deeper into it and see if the gameplay expands <clears throat> uh nothing wrong with a simple approach of course in the good old days it was easier roads were much better back then so all you had to do is chuckle yourself on the back of the truck and go for a drive can't do that now though even if you've got a truck they're usually more trouble than they're worth hell sometimes you'll see them just sitting on the side of the road locked and abandoned Anyway, on the bright side, since lugging big loads of cargo is so hard these days, folks are really grateful when a porter manage it, he manages it, hence the bonuses. Here at the Distro Center, for example, we have to make ev sure we've got plenty of food and materials in stock, which means we have to make every delivery count. I dread to think what would happen if we ran out of supplies. Well, I've said my piece, and now you know how to make yourself popular around these parts. Stack your cargo high. How did I get my bike back? I never lost it. Unless you're talking about the beginning of the game bike. This is a different bike. Uh, still alive, new guy? One second. Sorry, that wake up congestion. One thing you can do is take your old equipment to, del to the delivery terminal and recycle it. You can then fabricate yourself a shiny new whatever you to use instead. Don't know if you're aware, but the whole recycling system is operated by the Bridget Strand Foundation. That's right, the president herself set up a means to convert busted tools and gear back into reusable m resources. On the other hand, if your equipment's only half w halfway to broke, but you still want to part ways... You could use a share locker to donate it to another partner whose need, whose need is greater than yours. You may as well end up getting a like or two for your generosity. Never mind the warm fuzzy feeling of having helped your fellow man. Thumbs up, prayer, emoji. <laughs> hey, thank you, Rage Zed. Uh, of course, the system works both ways, meaning you can snag stuff from other porters. Have uh, the other porters have put in share lockers too, if you're the one who could use could do the, do with a helping hand. Anyway, both the recycling system and the share lockers have their uses, and it's up to you to pick which method best suits your needs at any given moment. You're still you still got a lot to learn, I guess, but you'll have to, it all figured out in no time. I've got I've got high hopes for you, kid. <clears throat> How's BB doing, Sam? I hope you've managed to avoid auto toxemia altogether. By the way, I've been wondering how are your porter grades these days getting better and better? I imagine, or maybe you don't really care. I don't care about you. Okay. Uh, well, in case you do, I thought I might give you a quick primer since I know it can be confusing. Bridges have developed a unique system to evaluate porter performance, and it forces on five for, focuses on five categories: cargo condition, delivery volume, speed, bridge link, and miscellaneous. Obviously, the aim of the game is to get high high grades on all five categories. If you ask me, though, you should prioritize cargo condition. And what's the point of lugging something halfway across the continent if it's smashed to bits in the process? Thinking emoji. Sure, there <laughs> some people aren't all that bothered. Some will even let you get away up to 50% damage or so. But come on. Imagine if you ordered a dozen thing with jigs and half of them were delivered broken. No, definitely. <laughs> Excuse me. Better to put condition first. Treat your cargo with care and respect and you'll be rewarded with way more likes. Trust me. That was my motto back when I was a porter. I was, it was always easy. As you can imagine, some th sometimes things get dicey, but I learned to hang in there and deliver my cargo in one piece. You do better. You do better to bear that in mind, Sam. After all, we've got the potential to be a way better porter than I ever was. I've got the potential. Okay. Uh, data, interviews. Oh man, that's a lot of that's a lot of reading. 
That's a lot of reading. He's trying to back Zetas, I know, what an ass. Uh, who? Die Hardman, Wire Bridges headquarters win five years ago. Humanity's biggest problem, logistics. War and famine have been inescapable parts of human life since the rise of our species, and while the fall of America hasn't changed the fundamental truth, it's fair to say that these issues aren't pressing concerns. Can you remember the last time you heard of a proper, uh, of a prepper dying of starvation, much less someone in a, in a not city? No one's fighting over water or oil or anything else, which isn't to say that people don't occasionally run into out of supplies, but that's almost never because because of a real that's almost never because of a real shortage. It's usually a problem with logistics. In fact. It was to address such problems that the president created bigs and, uh, bridges and developed the chiral network. So yeah, no one's that desperate. Everybody's got enough for themselves, which is which is what's led to the real problem. It's all too easy for people to become isolated from one another and eventually forget that others even exist. People are free to live for themselves for the moment without a care of, for the future. The president understood this better than anyone, and I know just how much a painter. <sighs> that's like today. That's like that's like that's like that's like a reflection of today. Which is like, we're, we, we, everybody, there's no wanting, you know, at least in a first world country. Like, yeah, there's starvation and famine in other parts of the world, but that mostly has to do with, like he said, A, logistics, but more importantly in our world, it's corruption. Like, it, it's not like, it's not like Africa is lacking supplies, but Africa has a lot of small tribes and cities and things that have significant corruption, you know, child armies and stuff. Overlords and that kind of thing. There's no lack of resources, just a lack of fr like a freedom, more or less. But anyway, uh, there's a lot less people in this world as well. Yeah, which is why there's less of that. But yeah. Oh, do I want to read all this, guys? That seems like a lot of reading. But I, at the same time, I think it's going to really open up some of the story. Let's give it a go. Necrosis in the ancient Egyptian view of life and death. From Bridges HQ Hartman three years ago. The Egyptians believed that we humans were composed of two elements. The Ha and the Ka. So the Ha and the Kappa. Got it. The BGG Ha and the Kappa. Lore. <laughs> Feels lore, man. Various texts expound upon their nature in detail, but perhaps it is simple to conceive of them as follows. The soul is the one that joins with the child in the womb and gives life to the body. It is also that which departs the soul upon death. Ergo, the body is simply a vessel. Should the soul return to it, it will live again. This is precisely what is observed in near-death experiences. The soul separated, albeit briefly, from its body. The Egyptians believed death not to be an instantaneous change of state, but a process, a process by which the soul moves from one realm to another. But this process itself has changed thanks to the death stranding and the normal order of things. When death occurs, the soul vacates the body and passes into the seam. From there, it transitions to the beach. <clears throat> God, I'm like short of breath for whatever reason. I don't know why. That's like I can't get a full breath. Uh, and only then on the world on, on the world of the dead. But after the stranding, the soul that has already made its journey to the b to the beach may attempt to return to its body in this world. It was hard to believe at first, but the process of necrosis provided proof of, of the phenomenon that was difficult to deny. This is why it's imperative that we burn the bodies of the dead. The body must be destroyed to sever the link with the soul. Only then will the soul be free to journey to the world beyond. Oh. 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 Ah. Oh. Chiral symmetry. The word chiral comes from the Greek care, meaning hand. Compare your left with your right. They seem similar in both size and shape, yes? Now face your palms away from you <clears throat> and place one hand over the other. Their shapes do not overlap exactly, but place your palms together <clears throat> and viola, a match. It is as if one hand is the mirror image of the other. But again, if you were to actually compare the mirror image of your hand to itself, we would see that the two are not identical. This is the es essence of chirality, the state in which the mirror image of a shape does not match the original. It has been theorized that BTs are mirror images of ourselves. Were we to exist in the same point in time and space, our shapes, as it were, would not overlap neatly onto one another, save in reflection. And when our particles meet their opposites, a void out occurs. The new form of communication we have devised utilizes beaches, which are 
akin to mirrors reflecting this world and the other. Hence the term travel network. So I wanna I wanna I wanna talk briefly about storytelling in this game and how it's doing it really right. Uh <clears throat> if I were playing if I were playing some games, every time I heard an expression that I didn't know, it would go into like a five hour long dialogue paragraph about what it is and when it was developed and da 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 just oversaturation of dialogue. And this game does it really nicely the way I think all storytelling should go where it, the characters are acting naturally. There's no forced exposition, you know, like a, a character in this world talks about chiral network like it's any other word. It's just another word in their vocabulary. Like if I said the Internet. I'm not going to sit here and go, the internet was developed by so-and-so in such and such year and it was originally designed for this purpose and now it's this purpose, you know? I don't say that. That's not what I'm going to say every time I mention the internet. I don't need to f give you forced, ex forced exposition. Exposition is the description of the world, you know, and the story. Uh, and when you play this game, they're like, ah, oh, yeah, we... We, we, we caught wind of it on the Cairo Network. And it doesn't stop and go, the Cairo Network was developed by so-and-so and such and such, da 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 No, it lets you discover it yourself intuitively through playing the game and discovering uh, different pieces of documentation that you can get that exposition on. It doesn't force it on you uh, with... with, with out of place dialogue that literally no one would ever say ever, you know, very important, very important. And you can choose to read it if you wish. Exactly. And even then you're not necessarily going to get the explanation. Like, like, uh, this isn't, this doesn't tell you what the chiral network is. It just tells you where the, the meaning of it, the, the, the etymology, that's it. That's all it does. That's, that's all it is. It's like, Hey, isn't this neat? But this is also like an old document document from three years ago. So. Yeah. Corellium. All right, we're gonna, okay. We're gonna read up to Cairo commit contamination too and then and then we'll do the quest. You would like to know a, more about Corellium. Well, why don't we all? I'm happy to, to present them latest theories, but you must be aware that this is all that we that they are, theories. Corellium, like dark matter, was born along with our universe and has existed ever since, just not in a dimension we were able to perceive. Oh. Monka dimensions. Until now. It is the beach that gives us access to this dimension, and with it, knowledge of Corellium's existence. Okay. Not, not just knowledge of it, of course. We have since observed its coalescing into crystalline form and recorded measured, measurable physical and mental effects on individuals exposed to it. It has reshaped our understanding of reality and proven instrumental in the formulation of the multiverse theory of beaches. Chiral matter is not affected by the passage of time, and as far as these particles are concerned, none, of the, none has elapsed since the Big Bing. Hmm. Little wonder... Well, they escaped our notice for so long, until Man and BT first came together in Void Out and left nothing but Corellium in their wake. Many of these claims are yet to be verified, but I believe that it that is a fair summary of the scientific community's current consensus on the matter. No pun intended. There's a pun there? On the matter. <laughs> I shall soon be headed west with the first expedition, and I, and I look forward to learning more about Corellium and its connections to the beach along the way. Chiral contamination is the result of a prolonged exposure to chiral radiation, which is emitted by Corellium, a substance discovered at the same time as the beach. Prolonged exposure can significantly impact physical and mental health. The effects are not dissimilar from those observed in individuals exposed to extremely high levels of stress, levels which can be fatal even. Such traumatic experience can alter hormonal secretions, impair immune response, contribute to heart failure, and induce strokes. The most common symptom of chiral contamination is poor sleep quality due to vivid nightmares. If left unchecked, however, it can quickly progress um, to progress. It can quickly, it can quickly progress a more advanced stage in which I think it's, it should be, it can quickly progress to a more advanced stage in which an aforementioned issue may be observed. The potential impact of an individual's mental health cannot be understated. The resulting hormonal imbalance frequently lead to heightened destructive impulses toward the self and others. Those dominated by such urges are named homo de de demons. 
the mad ones, homo demons, homo demons. In the case of some porters, such as mules, impaired memory and judgment has led them to develop an irrational obsession with their profession, hence the homo gestalt moniker. While it should be feasible and preferable for most individuals to avoid chiral contamination at all costs, there are those with the demonstrated resistance whose need, who need not be so cautious. I speak, of course, of doom sufferers. What's up, Iron Mog? Highlight. I'm BG Gene. Uh, chiral contamination two. Chiral contamination can be alleviated using similar methods to those used to alleviate stress, increased oxytocin secretion through contact with other people, administering smart drugs and so forth. In recent years, however, a hormone dubbed like Chan, known to mitigate the effects of chiral contamination while also restoring basic physical and mental activity, acuity rather, has attracted a great deal of attention from the scientific community. Unlike oxytocin, like Chan cannot be administered externally. It is secreted within the body, but only in response to external stimuli. It is said to be the hormone princip principally responsible for the positive feelings that occur when one achieves a goal, enjoys success, receives praise or gratitude, or any other form of like from a fellow human being. <laughs> am I seriously treating... Am I seriously treating my chiral contamination by getting likes on Facebook? Is that is that seriously... I mean, yeah, we were discussing this last night. All right, we'll read the rest of those interviews later. For now. The path they laid down was used successfully by someone else. Nice. All right, so what we're... What we're going to be doing is... uh Going down here... To get a document. I'm sure it'll be fine. Totally, totally fine. Oh man. Who put the wall there? What the hell was that? I think that was a cargo tracker. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse you.
It didn't explode? That's not a grenade! Oh god! Oh god! Oh, it's my body fluids. Oh, I just threw my piss at him. <laughs> ah! Ow! Uh, 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 okay. I have no choice. You must be punched! <laughs> Easy peasy. Easy peasy. <laughs> Wait, am I still in combat? Oh god, there's more of them. How am I supposed to deal with them all grouped up? Yeah, I thought it was a grenade, and then I looked at it, it says made of condensed body fluids collected from the shower. So I just threw, I just threw my, <laughs> I thought it was an actual grenade, it was just pee. I just threw pee on him. Come at me, nerds. Come on. Press square while using L2 and R2 to center your balance. Press... Oh. Yeah, got him. These guys are really bad at fighting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why can't I pick those up? There we go. Just run in and start throwing haymakers, exactly. Oh, these are the things that are in storage. Okay. Yeah, let's just grab all this. I've never played uh, Metal Gear Survive. Never heard of it. Oh no, that's the phone one, right? That's the fun phone one. Uh, that one was that was something else. Let me tell you. I mean, I never played it myself, but I heard about it, and I think all you need to do is hear about it to know how ridiculous that is. 